The views expressed and the opinions given by the individual host and their guests do not necessarily reflect those of Para-X, its affiliates, or its sponsors. All these voices Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Staring into the Abyss. I am your host, horror author James Hershey Jr., and with me, as always, my co-host, old boy James Ash. How you doing, brother? I am doing pretty good. How is everybody tonight? Today's article is a fun one. This is going to be good. It comes from Vice.com, and the headline is How to Escape the Confines of Time and Space, According to the CIA. In the 1980s, the spy agency investigated the gateway experience technique to alter consciousness and ultimately escape space-time. Here is everything you need to know. It was written by Toby Champion, and it was published on February 16th, 2021. She turned to me the other morning and said, You heard of the gateway. It didn't register in the moment. She continued, It's blowing up on TikTok. Later on, she elaborated, it was not, in fact, the ill-fated 90s computer hardware company folks were freaking out about. No, they've gone further back in time to find a true treasure of functional media. The intrigue revolves around a classified 1983 CIA report on a technique called the Gateway Experience, which is a traveling system designed to focus brainwave output to alter consciousness and ultimately escape the restrictions of time and space. The CIA was interested in all sorts of psychic research at the time, including the theory and applications of remote viewing, which is when someone views real events with only the power of their mind. The documents have since been declassified and are available to view, and there is a link there where you can click and go to view the actual documents. Now, you might be familiar with the concept of remote viewing, that's what that movie, The Men Who Stare at Goats, was based on. Essentially what it was, was the CIA set up rooms, let's say rooms, of people that had this psychic ability to remotely view someplace where they weren't. So what they were doing is getting these people to spy on Russia from inside some room that the CIA had set up, using their psychic vision to be able to see what was going on in Russia. It's really fascinating, fascinating tale. And it's all 100% true. I'm not saying the movie's 100% true, but the idea of remote viewing is 100% true. Our government did do that, and I'm sure the Soviets did as well. This is a comprehensive excavation of the Gateway Process Report. The first section provides a timeline of the key historical developments that led to the CIA's investigation and subsequent experimentations. The second section is a review of the Gateway Process Report. It opens with a wall of theoretical context, on the other side of which lies enough understanding to begin to grasp the principles underlying the Gateway Experience Training. The last section outlines the Gateway Technique itself and the steps that go into achieving space-time transcendence. Let's go. The Timeline, 1950s. Robert Monroe, a radio broadcasting executive, begins producing evidence that specific sound patterns have identifiable effects on human capabilities. These include alertness, sleepiness, and expanded states of consciousness. 1956, Monroe forms an R&D division inside his radio program, Production Corporation, RAM Enterprises. The goal is to study sound's effect on human consciousness. He was obsessed with sleep learning, or hypnopedia, which exposes sleepers to sound recordings to boost memory of previously learned information. Now, this is actually a very cool technique. I do this myself. I like to put on stuff that I'm trying to learn at night and listen to it as I go to sleep. And a lot of nights I'll listen to the Bible going to sleep as well. And what it does is it, it puts that information into your subconscious mind. 
and you have almost instantaneous recall of things that you have no idea that you know. Things that you don't ever remember learning, but they're just in your head now. And it's kind of cool because I'll say something and I'll know I'm right. Even though I don't remember where I heard it or, or how I learned it. And when I look it up, turns out I'm right. I think I owe a lot of that, not only to all the studying I do, but also this idea of putting this stuff on at night as I'm going to sleep. And it just kind of being ingrained in my subconscious from repetition of hearing it so many times while I'm sleeping. It works very, very well. 1958. While experimenting with sleep learning, Monroe discovers an unusual phenomenon. He describes it as sensations of paralysis and vibration accompanied by bright light. It allegedly happens nine times over the preceding six weeks and culminates in an out-of-body experience. 1962. RAM Enterprises moves to Virginia and renames itself Monroe Industries. It becomes active in radio station ownership, cable television, and later in the production and sale of audio cassettes. These cassettes contain applied learnings from the corporate research program, which is renamed the Monroe Institute. 1971. Monroe publishes Journeys Out of the Body, a book that is credited with popularizing the term out-of-body experience. 1972. A classified report circulates in the U.S. military and intelligence communities. It claims that the Soviet Union is pouring money into research involving ESP and psychokinesis for espionage purposes. 1975, Monroe registers the first of several patents concerning audio techniques designed to stimulate brain functions until the left and right hemispheres become synchronized. Monroe dubs the state Hemisync, hemispheric synchronization, and claims it could be used to promote mental well-being or to trigger an altered state of consciousness. 1978 to 1984, Army veteran Joseph McMoneagle contributes to 450 remote viewing missions under Project Stargate. He is known as Remote View Number One. This is a kind of a whole other story. June 9, 1983, the CIA report Analysis and Assessment of the Gateway Process is produced. It provides a scientific framework for understanding and expanding human consciousness, out-of-body experiments, and other altered states of mind. 1989, remote viewer Angela Delaforia Ford helps track down a former customs agent who has gone on the run. She pinpoints his location as Lowell, Wyoming. U.S. Customs apprehends him 100 miles west of a Wyoming town called Lovell. 2003, the CIA approves declassification of the Gateway Process Report. 2017, the CIA declassifies 12 million pages of records, revealing previously unknown details about the program, which would eventually become known as Project Stargate. The Report Personnel The author of the Gateway Process Report is Lieutenant Colonel Wayne M. McDonald, hereon referred to simply as Wayne. There isn't a tremendous amount of information available on the man, nor any photographs. In 1983, Wayne was tasked by the commander of the U.S. Army Operational Group with figuring out how the gateway experience, astral projection, and out-of-body experiences work. Wayne partnered with a bunch of different folks to produce the report. Most notably, Itzha Bentov, a very Googleable American-Israeli scientist who helped pioneer the biomedical engineering industry. A scientific approach. From the outset of the report, Wayne states his intent to employ an objective scientific method in order to understand the gateway process. The various scientific avenues he takes include a biomedical inquiry to understand the physical aspects of the process, information on quantum mechanics to describe the nature and functioning of human consciousness, theoretical physics to explain the time-space dimension and means by which expanded human consciousness transcends it, classical physics to bring the whole phenomenon of out-of-body states into the language of physical science and remove the stigma of an occult connotation. Methodological frames of reference. Before diving into the gateway experience, Wayne develops a frame of reference by dissecting three discrete consciousness altering methodologies. He's basically saying there's no way you're going to get through the gateway without a solid grounding in the brain altering techniques that came before it. He begins with hypnosis. The language is extremely dense, but the basic gist is as follows. 
The left side of the brain screens incoming stimuli, categorizing, assessing, and assigning meaning to everything through self-cognitive, verbal, and linear reasoning. The left hemisphere then dishes the carefully prepared data to the non-critical, holistic, pattern-orientated right hemisphere, which accepts everything without question. Hypnosis works by putting the left side to sleep, or at least distracting it long enough to allow incoming data direct, unchallenged entry to the right hemisphere. Their stimuli can reach the sensor and motor cortices of the right brain, which corresponds to the points in the body. Suggestions then can send electrical signals from the brain to certain parts of the body. Directing these signals appropriately, according to the report, can elicit reactions ranging from left leg numbness to feelings of happiness. Same goes for increased powers of concentration. Two, Wayne continues with a snapshot of transcendental meditation. He distinguishes it from hypnotism. Through concentration, the subject draws energy up the spinal cord, resulting in acoustical waves that run through the cerebral ventricles to the right hemisphere, where they stimulate the cerebral cortex, run along the homunculus, and then to the body. The waves are the altered rhythm of heart sounds, which create sympathetic vibrations in the walls of the fluid-filled cavities of the brain's ventricles. He observed that the symptoms begin in the left side of the body, confirming the right brain's complicity. Bentov also states that the same effect might be achieved by prolonged exposure to 4-7 hertz per second acoustical vibrations. He suggests standing by an air conditioning duct might also do the trick. David Lynch and other celebrities are committed adherents to transcendental meditation today. Three, biofeedback, on the other hand, uses the left hemisphere to gain access to the right brain's lower cerebral motor and sensory cortexes. Whereas hypnosis suppresses one side of the brain and TM bypasses that side altogether, biofeedback teaches the left hemisphere to visualize the desired result, recognize the feelings associated with right hemisphere access, and ultimately achieve the result again. With repetition, the left brain can reliably key into the right brain and strengthen the pathways so that it can be accessed during a conscious demand mode. A digital thermometer is subsequently placed on a target part of the body. When its temperature increases, objective affirmation is recognized and the state is reinforced. Achieving biofeedback can block pain, enhance feeling, and even suppress tumors, according to the report. The Gateway Mechanics with that, Wayne takes a first stab at the gateway process. He classifies it as a training system designed to bring enhanced strength, focus, and coherence to the amplitude and frequency of brainwave output between the left and right hemisphere so as to alter consciousness. What distinguishes the gateway process from hypnosis, TM, and biofeedback is that it requires achieving a state of consciousness in which the electrical brain patterns of both hemispheres are equal in amplitude and frequency. This is called hemisync. Lamentably, and perhaps conveniently, we cannot as humans achieve this state on our own. The audio techniques developed by Bob Monroe and his institute, which comprises a series of tapes, claim to induce and sustain hemisync. Here the document shifts to the usage of quotes and other reports to describe the powers of hemisync. Wayne employs the analogy of a lamp versus a laser. Left to its own devices, the human mind expends energy like a lamp in a chaotic and incoherent way, achieving lots of diffusion but relatively little depth. Under hemisync, though, the mind produces a disciplined stream of light. So once the frequency and amplitude of the brain are rendered coherent, it can then synchronize with the rarefied energy levels of the universe. With this connection intact, the brain begins to receive symbols and display astonishing flashes of holistic intuition. The hemisync technique takes advantage of a frequency following response, or an FFR. It works like this. An external frequency emulating a recognized one will cause the brain to mimic it. So if a subject hears a frequency at the theta level, it will shift from its resting beta level to achieve these unnatural levels. Hemisync puts a single frequency in the left ear and a contrasting frequency in the right. The brain then experiences the delta frequency, also known as the beat frequency. It's more familiarly referred to these days as binarial music. 
With the FFR and beat frequency phenomena firmly in place, the gateway process introduces a series of frequencies at marginally audible subliminal levels. With the left brain relaxed and the body in a virtual sleep state, the conditions are ideal to promote brainwave outputs of higher and higher amplitude and frequency. Alongside subliminal suggestions from Bob Monroe naturally, the subject can then alter their consciousness. The gateway system only works when the audio, which is introduced through headphones, is accompanied by a physical quietude comparable to other forms of meditation. This increases the subject's internal resonance to the body's sound frequencies. For example, the heart. This eliminates the bifurcation echo, in which the heartbeat moves up and down the body seven times a second. By placing the body in a sleep-like state, the gateway tapes, like meditation, lessen the force and frequency of the heartbeat, pushing blood into the aorta. The result is a rhythmic sine wave that in turn amplifies the sound volume of the heart three times. This then amplifies the frequency of brainwave output. The film surrounding the brain, the dura, and the fluid between that film and the skull eventually begin to move up and down by 0 0.0005 and 0 0.010 millimeters. The body, based on its own micromotions, then functions as a tuned vibrational system. The report claims that the entire body eventually transfers energy at between 6.8 and 7.5 hertz, which matches Earth's own energy. The resulting wavelengths are long, about 40,000 kilometers, which also happens to be the perimeter of the planet. According to Bentov, the signal can move around the world's electrostatic field in one-seventh of a second. To recap, the gateway process goes like this. And this is where all of that sciencey crap that I just said is going to be reduced down into words that a normal person can easily understand. So to recap, the gateway process goes like this. Induced state of calm, blood pressure lowers. Circulatory system, skeleton, and other organ systems begin to vibrate at 7 to 7.5 cycles per second. Increased resonance is achieved. The resulting sound wave matches the electrostatic field of the Earth. The body and Earth and other similarly tuned minds become a single energy continuum. We've gotten slightly ahead of ourselves here though, back to the drawing board. A psychoquantum level deeper. Wayne then turns to the very nature of matter and energy, more materially or less if you will. Solid matter in the strict construction of the term, he explains, doesn't exist. The atomic structure is composed of oscillating energy grids, surrounded by other oscillating energy grids at tremendous speeds. These oscillation rates may vary. The nucleus of an atom vibrates at 10 to the power of 22. A molecule vibrates at 10 to the power of 9. A human cell vibrates at 10 to the power of 3. The point is that the entire universe is one complex system of energy fields. States of matter in this conception, then, are merely variations in the state of energy. The result of all these moving energies bouncing off of energy at rest projects a 3D mode, a pattern called a hologram, also known as our reality as we experience it. It's best to think of it as a 3D photograph. There's a whole rabbit hole to go down here. Suffice it to say, the hologram that is our experience is incredibly good at depicting and recording all the various energies bouncing around creating matter. So good, in fact, that we buy into it hook, line, and sinker, going so far as to call it our life. Consciousness then can be envisioned as a 3D grid system, superimposed over all energy patterns, Wayne writes. Using mathematics, each plane of the grid system can then reduce the data to a 2D form. Our binary go-no-go -no -go minds can then process the data and compare it to other historical data saved in our memory. Our reality is then formed by comparisons. The right hemisphere of the brain acts as the primary matrix or receptor for this holographic input. The left hemisphere then compares it to the other data, reducing it to its 2D form. In keeping with our species' commitment to exceptionalism, as far as we know, humans are uniquely capable of achieving this level of consciousness. Simply, humans not only know, but we know that we know. This bestows upon us the ability to duplicate aspects of our own hologram, project them out, perceive that projection, 
run it through a comparison with our memory of the hologram, measure the differences using 3D geometry, then run it through our binary system to yield verbal cognition of the self. The clickout phase. Wayne then shows his cards as a true punisher, issuing. Up to this point, our discussion of the gateway process has been relatively simple and easy to follow. Now the fun begins. Shots fired, Wayne. What he's preparing the commander reading this heady report for is the reveal. How can we use the gateway to transcend the dimension of space-time? Time is a measurement of energy or force in motion. It is a measurement of change. This is really important. For energy to be classified as in motion, it must be confined within a vibratory pattern that can contain its motion, keeping it still. Energy not contained like this is boundaryless and moves without limit or dimension to infinity. This disqualifies boundaryless energy from the dimension of time because it has no rate of change. Energy in infinity, also called the absolute state, is completely at rest because nothing is accelerating or decelerating it. Again, no change. It therefore does not contribute to our hologram, our physical experience. We cannot perceive it. Now back to frequencies. Wave oscillation occurs because a wave is bouncing between two rigid points of rest. It's like a game of electromagnetic hot potato. The potato being the wave and the participant's hands being the boundaries of the wave. Without these limits, there would be no oscillation. When a wave hits one of those points of rest, just for a very brief instant, it clicks out of space-time and joins infinity. For this to occur, the speed of the oscillation has to drop below 10 to the power of negative 33 centimeters per second. For a moment, the wave enters into a new world. The potato simply disappears into a dimension we cannot perceive. Theoretically speaking, if the human consciousness wave pattern reaches a high enough frequency, the clickouts can reach continuity. Put another way, if the frequency of human consciousness can dip below 10 to the power of 33 centimeters per second, but above a state of total rest, it can transcend space-time. The gateway experience and associated hemisync technique is designed for humans to achieve this state and establish a coherent pattern of perception in the newly realized dimensions. Passport to the hologram. In theory, we can achieve the above at any time. The entire process, though, is helped along if we can separate the consciousness from our body. It's like an existential running head start, where the click out of a consciousness already separated from his body starts much closer to and has more time to dialogue with other dimensions. This is where things get a little slippery. Hold on as best as you can. The universe is in on the whole hologram thing too, Wayne writes. This super hologram is called a torus because it takes the shape of a F off massive self-contained spiral like this. And it has a picture of a self-contained spiral. Give yourself a moment to let the above motion sink in. This pattern of the universe conspicuously mirrors the patterns of electrons around the nucleus of an atom. Galaxies north of our own are moving away from us faster than the galaxies to the south. Galaxies to the east and west of us are more distant. The energy that produced the matter that makes up the universe we presently enjoy will turn back in on itself eventually. Its trajectory is a void, also known as the cosmic egg. As it curls back on itself, it enters a black hole, goes through a densely packed energy nucleus, then gets spat out the other side of a white hole and begins the process again. Springtime in the cosmos, baby. The entire universe hologram, the torus, represents all the phases of time, the space, present, and future. The takeaway is that human consciousness brought to a sufficiently altered or focused state could obtain information about the past, present, and future, since they all live in the universal hologram simultaneously. Wayne reasons that our all-reaching consciousness eventually participates in an all-knowing infinite continuum. Long after we depart the space-time dimension and the hologram that each one of us perceives is snuffed out, our consciousness continues, reassuring in a way. And that is the context in which the gateway experience sits. Now, the technique. The following is an outline of the key steps to reach focus levels necessary to defy the space-time dimension. This is an involved and lengthy process best attempted in controlled settings. 
If you're in a rush, you can apparently listen to enough Monroe Institute gateway tapes in seven days to get there. The energy conversion box. The gateway process begins by teaching the subject to isolate any extraneous concerns using a visualization process called the energy conversion box. Resonant humming. The individual is introduced to resonant humming through the utterance of a protracted single tone alongside a chorus on the tapes. The mind and body achieve a state of resonance. The gateway affirmation. The participant is exposed to something close to a mantra called the gateway affirmation. They must repeat to themselves variations of, I am merely a physical body and deeply desire to expand my consciousness. Hemisync. The individual is finally exposed to the hemisync sound frequencies and encouraged to develop a relationship with the feelings that emerge. Additional noise. Physical relaxation techniques are practiced while the hemisync frequencies are expanded to include pink and white noise. This puts the body in a state of virtual sleep while calming the left hemisphere and raising the attentiveness of the right hemisphere. The energy balloon. The individual is then encouraged to visualize the creation of an energy balloon, beginning at the top of the head, extending down in all directions to the feet, then back up again. There are a few reasons for this. The main one being that this balloon will provide protection against conscious entities possessing lower energy levels that he or she may encounter when in the out-of-body state. Now I'm going to stop for a second because that right there is very important. And you might find yourself kind of being lulled to a, a state of sleep by my voice as I'm talking. Because a lot of this is very heady stuff and it's not easy to follow. And you might kind of zone out a little bit. So I want to read that part again and pay close attention. The individual is then encouraged to visualize the creation of an energy balloon, beginning at the top of the head, extending down in all directions, to the feet, then back up again. There are a few reasons for this. The main one being that this balloon will provide protection against conscious entities possessing lower energy levels that he or she may encounter when in the out-of-body state. What they're saying here is when you leave your body, there are other entities out there that you need protection from. These things could try to hurt you. That is a huge admission from the CIA. They are admitting that there are ghosts, spirits, demons, whatever you want to call these dangerous entities that reside in the spirit dimension. When your spirit leaves your body and enters into this spiritual dimension, there are entities there that are going to try to hurt it. That is huge. Focus 12. The practitioner can consistently achieve sufficient expanded awareness to begin interacting with dimensions beyond their physical reality. To achieve this state requires conscious efforts and more pink and white noise from the sound stream. Tools. Once Focus 12 is achieved, the subject can then employ a series of tools to obtain feedback from alternate dimensions. Problem solving. The individual identifies fundamental problems, fills their expanded awareness with them, and then projects them out into the universe. These can include personal difficulties as well as technical or practical problems. Patterning. Consciousness is used to achieve desired objectives in the physical, emotional, or intellectual sphere. Color breathing. A healing technique that revitalizes the body's energy flows by imagining colors in a particularly vivid manner. Energy bar tool. This technique involves imagining a small, intensely pulsating dot of light that the participant charges up. He or she then uses the sparkling, vibrating cylinder of energy, formerly known as the dot, to channel forces from the universe to heal and revitalize the body. Remote viewing, a follow-on technique of the energy bar tool, where the dot is turned into a whirling vortex through which the individual sends their imagination in search of illuminating insights. Living body map, a more organized use of the energy bar in which streams of different colors flow from the dot onto correspondingly colored bodily systems. Seven days of training have now occurred. Approximately 5% of participants get to this next level, according to the report. Focus 15, travel into the past. Additional sound on the hemi-sync tapes 
includes more of the same, plus some subliminal suggestions to further expand the consciousness. The instructions are highly symbolic. Time is a huge wheel in which different spokes give access to the participant's past. Focus 21, the future. This is the last and most advanced state. Like Focus 15, this is a movement out of space-time into the future. Out-of-body movement. Only one tape of the mini is devoted to out-of-body movement. This tape is devoted to facilitating an out-of-body state when the participant's brainwave patterns and energy levels reach harmony with the surrounding electromagnetic environment. According to Bob Monroe, the participant has to be exposed to beta signals of around 2,877.3 cycles per second. Conclusions. Wayne expresses concern about the fidelity of information brought back from out-of-body states using the gateway technique. Practical applications are a particular concern because of the potential for information distortion. The Monroe Institute also ran into a bunch of issues in which they had individuals travel from the west to the east coast of the U.S. to read a series of numbers off of a computer screen. They never got them exactly right. Wayne chalks this up to the trouble of differentiating between physical entities and extra time-space dimensions when in an out-of-body state. Wayne swings back to support mode, though, lending credence to the physics foundation of the report. He cites multiple belief systems that have established identical findings. These include the Tibetan Shug, the Hindu heaven of Indra, the Hebrew mystical philosophy, and the Christian concept of the Trinity. Here he seems more interested in hammering home the theoretical underpinnings that make the gateway experience possible, rather than the predictable possibilities promised by the gateway tapes. Possibly with his CIA top brass audience in mind, Wayne then gives an A-type nod to the gateway experience for providing a faster, more efficient, less subservient, energy-saving route to expanded consciousness. This finishes with a series of recommendations to the CIA for how to exploit Gateway's potential for national defense purposes. The missing page. One curious feature of the Gateway report is that it seems to be missing page 25. It's a real cliffhanger too. The bottom of page 24 reads, and the eternal thought or concept of self, which results from this self-consciousness serves the, the report picks back up on page 26 and three sections later, as if Wayne hadn't just revealed the very secret of existence. The gap has not gone unnoticed. There's a change.org petition requesting its release. Multiple Freedom of Information Act requests have demanded the same. In all cases, the CIA has said they never had the page to begin with. Here's a 2019 response from Mark Lilly, the CIA's information and privacy coordinator, to one Bailey Stoner regarding these records. One theory goes that that rascal Wayne M. Fricking McDonald left the page out on purpose. The theory contends that it was a litmus test. If anyone truly defies time, space, dimensions, they'll certainly be able to locate page 25. Cosmic Shrug. And that is the end of this very, very long, but very interesting article. Now, I don't have a whole lot to comment after this because I commented during on different parts, but this was huge, man. It admitted time travel is possible and that it occurs. The CIA knows about it and they have been practicing it. It admits remote viewing is not only possible, but was absolutely done. It also admits that you can leave your body to go into the spiritual realm, the spiritual dimension. In that realm, there are entities that are evil and that are trying to hurt you, that you need protection from. That is a huge, huge admission as well. Now, this isn't stated as theoretical. This isn't stated as we think there might be or, or what if there is. This is stated as this is empirical fact. And here is a technique that you can use to protect you from these entities while you're in the spiritual realm. Absolutely fascinating. 100% cool. I hope that you guys really, really dug this article. I know it was long. I know that it was sciencey and heady. And I know that that gets to be mind-numbing sometimes. But hopefully you get the basic gist of it, which is how they do this is they make their their mind, their body, their organs, everything vibrate at the same frequency as the earth. Once you reach that same frequency and the resonance occurs, you can pop out of your body and cruise around and do all kinds of groovy things. That's the basic idea. 
there's a whole bunch of science talk that confirms it and explains it that most people don't understand. That doesn't matter. What matters, you make yourself vibrate, same as the earth, boom, you pop out and you party with, with the spiritual entities that are trying to kill you. That's the bottom line. Let me know down in the comments what you thought of the article and what you think about all the things that the CIA admitted in this article because it was a lot. And thank you, brother. This is very interesting because I'm going to tell you guys I've been hearing this stuff for a long time. I started hearing it from Art Bell, guys. You remember um, KFI? I don't know if that's what it was out there, but that's what it was out here. Um, coast to coast, KFI, that's what we listen to. Coast to coast, everywhere else. I don't know what else to, uh, over. This was in the California part in Nevada because he lived in per, uh, Pahrump. And then I think George Norrie did it for a while. And, and I used to listen to this, and I didn't really understand it. And after a while, I started – um, I'm glad we did this because it's been a long time coming. I knew eventually we were going to get to remote viewing and all this stuff. I'm going to tell you what I think in a minute. When I used to listen to is pretty much the same thing James is talking about in the, in the article and stuff like that. Is tra time travel and can you – if everybody in, – and when I listened to Art Bell, he did this one thing where they called a bunch of people. And they wish something to happen, but he had a lot of people over his radio. To, I guess he was sick with uh, with with something. Uh, I think he was, or a friend was sick with cancer, and they and he had everybody think of that person. And eventually, he got rid of the cancer. So they think that so many people at one time wish something good or bad, whatever you want, can might be able to fix somebody. Because you're sending so much energy to that person. That's how I first heard about this in remote voting. And, and, uh, and that's George Nori always talks about it now. That I mean, I don't know if he's on there anymore, but he did before when I, but I haven't listened to him for a couple of years. So they would talk about it a lot. And I was like, yeah, I kind of got tired of it. But um, <laughs> so many years of hearing about it. But this was pretty um, awesome because I do believe it. I believe the government did use stuff like that uh, where you can change your body and, you know, and uh, you can leave your body. I mean, change your body. You can leave your body. Sorry, guys, uh, for that mess up. Leave your body and go travel through time. I do believe that's possible. I believe they knew what they were doing by doing it. I know they, they do a lot of things, with, but we just don't talk about it because uh, some things you just leave alone. This one's one you might want, you know, that's why it was kind of hard to talk about because there's certain things that they're doing right now and we're not allowed to really talk about. But remote viewing has been something I've heard about for for probably 20-something years now, 25, I think it is. Too. I wouldn't say that long, about 22. That's how long I've been listening to Art Bell, I think about 23, 24 years ago, I think it was when I started listening to him, even longer maybe, um, give or take. Um, I believe it. I believe you can. And leave your body, um, out of body experiences, remote viewing. I think that you can control yourself in so many ways, especially in your, I think your dreams have something to do with it too. Because I told, talked about how I used to be able to see my body when I was younger, and I still can. My, my wife does it more than I do. She walks while she sleeps. And if you guys have seen Insidious, that's what that's about. She can see things. He ha she goes and sees doorways. One time, maybe we'll even have her on the show. She can tell about that. That would be an interesting show. She can tell us about what she sees and deals with all the time because it's pretty crazy. I used to see my body sleeping and things attacking me, and I would fight them off. I seen my dead friend visit me after she died a week later. And honestly, she didn't look too good. <laughs> It was kind of crazy. She had passed away like a, a week or two before that. And I saved two weeks almost, I think it was. And I had a dream it was her. And I seen her. But I could see her attacking me. Like, not trying to like hurt me, but she was trying to get my attention. But she was not the same person. It was weird. I knew it was her, though. And I could see my body. And I could see myself. I would wake up, but I would still be dreaming. It was really weird. And I would still be dreaming after a dream, after a dream, after a dream. It was really weird. But I could see myself all the time and I would fight things off and it was crazy. I could see people who died. I could see myself sleeping. I could see my family if they were sleeping. So I believe they know how to use this to go time travel because it would be easy to. If you could leave your body and travel through time because I think they all connect in some way. And like I said, I don't want to get too lost in this because James is like 
this is something it's people are going to say, oh, oh boy, this is a, you know, this is hard for me to understand. It's not. If you really read the article, guys, and we'll put it up there for you and listen to the show. At first, I was like, man, I don't know how I'm going to do this show. But then I was like, man, I could do any show. Really, I can do anything you pretty much give it. Except when it comes to like science and stuff, it that kind of, <laughs> you know, I can only do so much. But this one, I've dealt with it my own life. So I believe it. I have seen things in dreams and they have come true. I have seen things that I might have been back in time before, but I don't know if I could say it was. But it seemed like I was back in memories. It's weird. Like I went back in my own memories, but I think it was just me traveling through time. But I've never gone like I, it was my own timeline. It wasn't like, oh, I went back to 1965 and saw the doors playing at a concert or. 1859 and saw Billy the Kid, you know, rob somebody. It isn't like that. But I think there's a way they have controlled it to where they can, people can use their body and they can leave it to jump other bodies, maybe timelines. I, I don't know. You know, it's hard to, to explain. Say that you learned how to leave your body. You could see your body. You could even jump into somebody else's body. I believe you can do that too. That's a whole nother one we could talk to talk about on a next show we ever do because we always end up doing a sequel to almost every one or even more, multiple shows about stuff we talk about i believe you can control things i believe there's people out there who can i believe there's people who use their mind more than most people do i think you can control your outcome and a, a lot of things not your whole life but i think you can control a lot of things in your life that happens and it comes true i'll be honest with you guys a lot of things i've seen before it happens it happens i'm not no fortune teller or anything like that but sometimes i'll think about it or see it and it'll happen i'll tell you when i was a kid mike tyson was gonna fight james buster douglas mike tyson was undefeated at that time without a shadow of doubt or saying anything i was probably nine i think it was 89 i was like probably nine or ten i think ten i said tyson's gonna lose and they were laughing at me because they said, Tyson's the greatest fighter of all time. He's never going to lose. He got knocked out a week later that week. People, tr oh, you just got lucky. One time, a guy's, we were walking out in the middle of the street. This car flies by. I seen in my head picturing this car hitting my friend, turned around, and my friend was flying over the car, uh, uh, the car after I already seen it happen. It was weird. It was like something told me. And when I turned around to tell him to watch out, he was flying over the car. I've done it with numerous things with my life. I knew I was going to be a radio personality years ago, and I did it. I knew it was going to be somebody opposite to me, and it happened. I've seen things all my life. Now, the government or whoever is doing things are using this to go try time travel for some other. We all know what the reasons are, probably good and bad, to stop certain things from happening. I also think they can do mind control. You know, that's one of the big things, remote viewing and mind control and stuff was that. If you've seen some things they talk about, like they can control certain people. They control, they learn how to use that. That's why they watch people like this. They, they get these kind of people and they start studying them so they can figure out how to use it against other people or other enemies. I'm not saying for a purpose, but if they've seen stuff that people have done like out of like their normal, normal people and all of a sudden they just do something out of the blue. Like they showed this lady was walking on the a guy was walking on the street doing nothing. All of a sudden he just jumped in the car and they said he totally he was talking. It was like but the weird thing it was he was talking on like a, in front of a newscast like in the middle of like I guess it was in Britain. Something was like a while ago. It was on video. It was just talking to somebody like doing an interview and he decided to just walk in traffic. They said he totally turned his whole face, facial turned to like a like blank, and he did it. So I think they're all tied in together. I think they're used for different things, especially like like we were talking about to see into the future, uh, past and the future. I wouldn't just say in time travel. They probably have done that. I also think that you can see different people's bodies. You can move bodies. You can control people. You can see what people are doing. I try not to do this too much, guys, because I don't want to get lost and never come back, if you guys get what I mean. So I've learned how to control it. My wife needs to learn how to control it, and she's pretty good at it, but she's she doesn't do it as bad anymore, but she used to travel. What that means, she travels somewhere else, either time, her dreams, or another dimension. 
When she wakes up, she'll have scratches. While she's sitting down, she'll have scratches. Things will touch her. Scratches on her back. It happens. And it's not ghost or anything. It's like that. It, that's a whole other thing. Yes, we do have that stuff that happens too. But this is a whole different thing. And there's other th like other beings. There's dark entities. There's stuff that's not just demons. Everybody thinks everything is a demon or a, a fallen angel. It's not. There's other things out there. Other dimension uh, creatures, shadow people. I don't think shadow people have nothing to do with that. It's a whole, it's just an evil entity. There's different things that we don't even know about yet, guys. This is this stuff is going to come out one day, and I don't think people are going to be able to uh, deal with it. Especially with, with you know aliens, people are finally starting to admit to that. You know, there's an I don't want to get off the subject, but there's an article me and James sent at the same time. It was really weird. And we probably might be doing a show about it soon. Is the airlines in New Mexico said it? They saw aliens, and they told the FBI that they're not denying it no more. So that's just another thing it has nothing. To do, but I'm just saying it. It all fits in together. We're going to be shocked one day when when we find out the truth about everything that's going on, and this is going to be tied into it. I I think aliens use it. They use it for mind control. I think they uh, use it for you know. Te telepathy. I can't say the word. You could talk without using your lips. I, I I can't say certain words, guys. I've never been able to. It's something that I've always had problems with. I don't pronunciate good. But you know what I'm talking about when you use your control without your lips and you just use your mind. I think that's what aliens have mastered, and I think there's few people who have mastered it. Not like you know, kind of like Professor X, but not that extreme. But there's probably a few people who know how to do certain things that we can't. Or you can, but you don't know yet. Because they just want us... I think people are getting... I think, I think technology is good, but it's not. There's, there's, there's falls and there's pluses to it. I think that people are getting smarter computer-wise, but communication-wise, they're falling backwards. They don't know how to talk to people. Or they don't want to be around people. Or they only want to be around certain people they're comfortable with. And then there's some people who don't care they'll be around everybody. It just that's just, just happens. I believe a lot of this article, I've seen the movies before, like the goats and stuff like that, control goats and stuff. Those are cool movies. I haven't seen that movie for a while, but I remember it. I remember listening to Art Bell about remote viewing and how they would talk about it could it can heal people. Get rid of, it got rid of certain people's can cancer. I think they prayed for Rush Limbaugh back then when he had cancer. And I remember they were praying for him at that time. And then he ended up a couple months later getting away from cancer and his other friend too. That's what I was talking about because I guess he was a fan of him back then. And I know some people like Rush and some don't. I know rest in peace. He passed away last week. And that's the far as I'll go about it. I don't want to bring anything up or offend anybody or get anybody mad. But that he did pass away and rest in peace that's all i'm gonna say but it was for him i remember that because i remember he had got cancer uh like a while ago years 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 ago and he got cured from it then and he got i think he got it back again or third time or something and that's what they were trying to do because i believe if you have enough people believing in the same thing or almost the same thing you can fix things it's just the energy that we have but I believe people are using it for good, and I believe it, like always, it's money or bad things, or against enemies. Military weapon, um, NASA, uh, shadow government, other governments, Russians, China, they all use it, and they all have done it. So I'll go ahead and let James finish this one off for you guys. There you go, brother. The time where people would laugh at any of the kind of paranormal or conspiracy things that people talk about, or simply dismiss them as unrealistic, that time has passed. Think about what we now know to be true. What has been declassified and released by the government in just the last year or two. We have declassified proof aliens exist we have declassified proof that our government has recovered at least three separate crash sites 
And at all three, there were bodies. Declassified proof through these documents that the spiritual world exists, that there are dark entities that want to hurt you in the spiritual realm that you need protection from, that time travel exists, that our government has done it. That's just a few things. We also have declassified proof of genetic modification of human animal chimeras that were created by the government. We have declassified proof now of weather modification. I did an episode of Paranormal News about China, about their weather modification program. And I mean, mainstream news, how they are talking about they can control the weather and they can make it snow and make it rain and do whatever the hell they want. It's verified, completely factual. Now, all of those things, if you would have talked about them five years ago, they'd have said you were crazy. Every single one of those things now verified true. So as I said, the time for people to say, oh, I don't believe that, or, or you're nuts, man, that, that's just crazy talk. Those, those days are past, guys. We have walked through the mirror. We are on the other side of the looking glass. We are far, far down the rabbit hole. It's Wonderland, baby. We, there are no subject matters or no thoughts that are too crazy at this point. Look at all we know to be true now that normal people would have considered insane. Now, we've been talking about a lot of this stuff for years, but... We, we traffic in that area where we're not like normal people. We're paranormal people. We are involved in a paranormal. We work in a paranormal. Uh, I've been in, in with government my pretty much my whole life. So we know a little bit more than a normal person knows about these kind of subject matters. But we've been talking about them for years and years and years. And there was a good stretch of time there where people thought we were nuts. Somebody even compared me to Alex Jones at one point, to old boy. But every single thing I've said on this channel has been 100% true. Every single thing I've said on this radio show has been 100% true. All of it has been proven. There are declassified documents to back it all up. So I'm excited to see what's next. I know a lot of people are losing their minds right now. A lot of people are freaking out because the world is upside down and sideways and all hell's breaking loose and, and up is down and left is right and good is bad and it's nuts right now. But that's because people are waking up and people are seeing what's actually going on for a change. For a lot of us, we've been around awake for a long, long time. So it's not such a big shock to us because we've known a lot of these things already. But for the normal person that didn't believe any of this stuff before, they're kind of freaking out, man. They're white knuckling it. And what I would say to you is relax. It's going to be all right. God's in control. If you're a believer, take comfort in that. If you're not a believer, well, you're going to see. <laughs> That's all I can say. Uh, things are going to be okay. As I said, God is in control. In the end, I mean, I've read the book. I, I, I hate to be a spoiler here. I'll tell you the ending. God wins. We're going to be all right. If you're just waking up and you're just starting to see all this crazy stuff in the news and, and everything, and you're like, oh my God, I can't believe it. What is going on? That's why a lot of us have been looked at as crazy for so long because we've known all this stuff for years and we try to tell people and we get shunned for it and people say we're nuts well a lot of it's coming out in the news now so i'm very very excited for this time when there'll be a remember a year and a half two years ago maybe more i did an episode of this show where i talked about there was going to be a great awakening coming where mankind was going to awaken to what's really going on. And I caught so much flack for that 
show. I got YouTube actually demonetized the channel and, and shadow banned me and everything for that episode. But I was right. Because that's exactly what's taking place right now. A lot of people are waking up to what's really going on. And a lot of people are having a lot of trouble handling it. All I can say is hold on. It's going to be okay. So with that being said, we need to go to shout outs because we are plumb out of time. So old boy, go ahead, brother. Thank you, guys. I want to thank you all for listening to us on Parax Radio every Sunday night. <laughs> Monday morning, technically, if you live in the East. I want to give a shout out to my friend, Akila Williams, and her CD, What You Gonna Do. If you guys want to check this out, she's a um, a singer who sings a, her and her band sing a lot of uh, variety of jazz, R&B, oldies, blues, and top 40. If you guys want to check her out, tequilawilliams.music.com and on YouTube, Lady T Tequila and Friends, aka Lady T Tequila is, I guess, her other name she goes by. If you like her music, her CD's out right now. Again, Tequila Williams, what you gonna do? You guys can check it out and check out her site. Uh, either or, I, I guess, on YouTube or I guess that's her Facebook page. Or I'm not Facebook page, that's her uh, actual website page. So I want to give her a shout out. Thank you, Miss Tequila Williams, for the CD. Um, and if you guys want any merchandise, guys, check us, uh, our new shirt I, brought, I made. It was like a lichen, and it says Staring into the Abyss. It's really cool. Let us know if you guys like it. I, we just brought it out like a week or two ago. Um, if you guys want COVID masks and the other kind of shirts, sweaters, hoodies, uh, COVID masks, all kinds of cool stuff, check it out, guys. If you like it, let us know. If you want something new, we'll make it for you. So I want to tell everybody thank you for listening to our show. It's going to be almost March. I hope everybody had a good Valentine's Day. St. Patty's Day is coming up in a couple weeks. I'm Irish, so you know what that means. <laughs> so I hope everybody has a good night. Misfits, Sugar Ladies, Monster Hunters. And demon lovers, I love you, and have a good night, and blessed be, guys. All right, thank you guys for listening on the radio, and thank you all for watching on YouTube. I don't have any time for shameless plugs because I went way long, but I just want to say I love you until we speak to you again. Love many, trust few, and do harm to none. God loves you, and so do we. Bye-bye. <laughs>